Hello, my name is Nicole and I just want to share with you some scriptures out of the Holy Bible about faith after giving you a testimony in a previous video. I want to go ahead and uh, encourage those of you who um, know that you have fallen away from God, but you really want to get back with the Lord. And it starts with faith. So your faith nine times out of 10 has taken a hit over the years. And now you've got to build your faith back up in him. So when we go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse one, there is a scripture there that many of you seasoned believers are familiar with. And it is now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. So some things you're not going to be able to see when it comes to um, trusting and believing in the Lord. But you know that they're going to happen. And we see example after example after example in the Holy Bible where people were told messages and they had to just go on faith. Uh, when it came to fighting a war, they had to go on faith that God was there and they were going to win. When it came to uh, receiving healing in the family, they had to go on faith and believe that God was going to heal. When it came down to uh, food and shelter and things of that sort, they had to believe that God was going to supply the food and the shelter along the way. So faith is definitely something that you've just got to know that you know that God did tell you that you are going to come up out of your situation. And you just have to believe that you're going to come up out of your situation. If God says that, I want you to draw near to me. And when you do draw near to me, I'm going to give you this, this, and this. Then you've got to have the faith to know that God is going to supply your needs. And there are some people that they have trouble just believing in the power of the name of Jesus, let alone anything else. Moving on. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now I said it in a question mark because that's what I'm asking you. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes. Now in the Bible, it's not written as a question mark because there is no question about it. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's faith. God tells you something and then you go in the Bible and you see example after example where other people were blessed. There you have it. Romans chapter 12, verse three, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So we tend to think that everything we do, it's in our own strength and that there was no spiritual entity that had anything to do with it. I beg to differ. There are people that pray for you, even though you may not believe in the Lord, when some of you do believe in the Lord and these people are still praying for you. There are those individuals that believe that all they have to do is just make a phone call, voila, and things will happen. Well, sometimes that might happen and sometimes you might have to do more than just make a phone call. And so some people who believe in the spiritual realm will do some things in the spiritual realm to make things happen. If people can do it on the dark side, then why is it that people um, on the side of God won't trust in him? In Hebrews chapter 12, verse two, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So we look to Jesus as the one who puts the faith in us and until our dying day, he will continue to uh, put things around us. And, and move on us to continue to believe in him. It was him who went through all the trials and tribulations that led up 
to him being hung on the cross and then eventually him hanging there and then of course coming off the cross and coming back again and despite all that shame he still sits on the right hand of the throne of God and so despite all the things that we're going through we're going to sit up in heaven with Jesus one day but you have to believe that and if you don't believe it well it doesn't matter it's still going to happen for somebody that's just how it is you know it doesn't matter if you don't believe that uh, the sky is blue or that's the that uh, somebody's going to get blessed in your family with a whole lot of money it doesn't matter whether or not you believe it if that's what God wants it to be then it will be people sometimes act as if well if I disbelieve it then it won't happen well it <laughs> You don't have that much power. You know, you can disbelieve all you want. Some people like to assume that, well, you know, everything I say and do, I've got power over that. Well, you have power within your camp, but you don't have power over other people's camp, especially if they don't lend that power to you. Now, for those who lend that power, you know, to you, then, of course, you have the power to manipulate situations and influence them to believe otherwise. But. Here's one who's not lending her power over to anybody because if God tells me something, it doesn't matter what people disbelieve. I'm going in Jesus name, irregardless. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. All it takes is just a little bit of faith in the kingdom. That's it. Just a little bit of faith and things will happen. The atmosphere will change. But people say, well, it's not happening when I want it to happen. I didn't get that job when that minister told me I was going to get that job. I, my marriage didn't uh, last like everybody said it was going to last. Well, that that those are things that we have to understand that. We have some degree of power over, you know, if we really want something bad enough, then we're going to get it. It may not be a certain job or a certain marriage or what have you um, that will um, will will happen um, if if uh, that person on the other end isn't in agreement. You know, because in a situation like that, you've got to have some uh, or in situations like that, you've got to have agreement. But um, when God wants something done, you know, it does it doesn't matter. Once again, it doesn't matter whether you agree or she agree or this person or whoever It's it's going to happen. So that's where God's will comes into play. And that's a whole new other topic of discussion. But faith. All you need is some mustard seed faith. It may not be exactly what you want, when you want it, how you want it. But if it's it, if it's something that God wants you to have, you're going to get it. Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 24. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things Soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. There you, there you go. So, there are those things that God says, hey, you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will receive them. And this is definitely for the believers. Now, unbelievers will take a scripture like this and apply it to their life and then say it won't, it don't, it don't work. Well, you're an unbeliever because you only believe in this particular passage of scripture, but you don't believe in nothing else in the Bible. So you can't be taking little pieces of the scriptures and applying it to certain areas of your life and then saying, oh, but I don't believe in all this other stuff. No, well, you, you just this word might as well, you know, just go over, go over some people's head. 
it's just how it is. Some people are just going to take things and run with it, and, and but yet they don't want to do everything else. So Romans chapter 1 verse 17, we hear about faith here. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just, here we go, shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. So some people say, well, you still don't have that car yet that you said that you were going to have. Mm-hmm. I see God's not uh, giving out cars these days. Uh, you said something about you were going to get your uh, some new job. You said something about you and your wife was going to stay together. But I see that she walked out on you. See, that's all sight. That's all sight. Because there are a whole lot of other things that take place behind the scenes that we don't know about. So we have to stand on faith. Like I said, if God told you, then that settles it. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, once again, this is one of those things that you can't just pull out a little bit of scripture and say, Okay, yep, I've got this, but I don't get, I, I'm not interested in that. You have to seek the Lord. You have to have a relationship. You know, that's like expecting a husband, somebody else's husband to give you something. And you're and he doesn't have, first of all, a relationship with you. You're not his wife. How do you figure you're going to get anything from him? Or expecting uh, a boss to give you something and you never come in his office and sit down and get to know him. You don't uh, provide any solutions to anything going on in the workplace. You just clock in and clock out. You've got to, to seek the Lord. You've got to diligently seek him. That, you know, So you can't just pick the scriptures out on Monday, take a break Tuesday, Wednesday, then get back to him on a Thursday, Friday. Then, oh, maybe I'll get back to him about two, three weeks because I got some other stuff I need to be doing. Uh-uh. No wonder prayers don't get answered. Okay, so then we're moving on to First um, Peter chapter one uh, seven through nine. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen, ye love, and whom thou know, ye see him not. Yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. No explanation needed there. First John chapter 5, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Just think if more people had faith. We would be able to overcome so many things in the world. So many. Matthew chapter 9 verses 20 through 22. And behold a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood. Twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself if I may but touch his garment I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole. So if you have faith, and you believe that somebody's coming up out of their situation, whether here on earth, or here in heaven, or here, <laughs> here in heaven, I wish we were in heaven right now, or up in heaven, then, hey, that's all that matters. That's all that matters because sometimes we're believing for healing for people that God has already called home. So if God already called them home, you, we could have faith all we want. God has decided that this is it. End of discussion. This is it. So we might as well just believe, there we go again, faith that they're going to be all right. Matthew chapter 9 verses 28 through 29. And when he was 
Come into the house. The blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. So it's just simple belief. Once again, all these scriptures do is just remind us that it's not rocket science. This issue of faith is just belief, just a simple belief. And then all of a sudden, all sorts of things happen in your atmosphere. Things happen. They may not look right at first, but then God works all of that difficulty out. Those challenges that you're faced with on the job, he works it out. But you've got to have the faith and you've got to talk to him every day and get some insight because he will use you to make things happen just a little bit faster. He can do that. Well, sometimes what happens is we don't allow God to use us. We decide we're going to go ahead and do things ourselves, like in the situation with Abraham and Sarah, where Sarah decides, you know what? OK, so I'm going to have this baby, what have you. I'm going to go and, and have Hagar be the surrogate mom, if you will. And go ahead and have me and Abraham a baby. And then once that happened, she started resenting her. You see, you jump the gun and then you start resenting people. Because now you see God's uh, promise coming to pass. So you say, oh, okay, good, good. Well, see, I, that's right. God is good. He helped me through my situation. Hallelujah. But then you, but then you created a mess though along the way. And now you're like, oh, but that don't matter. I, I don't have to worry about that no more. You know, you can go on about your business, telling people, go ahead. I don't need you and all that. Now that God's word has come to pass. No, you've got to fix those situations that you created because you weren't patient enough to wait. You've got to go back and fix some things. You can't just ignore people, places and things that you started, that you created, buildings that you probably had something to do with. Um, uh you architects out there and now you want to abandon projects. Uh, some of you who started these programs and the money's not coming in. Um, but you started some other program with somebody else. And so that money is coming in. Right. And you know that that, that organization is blessed, but the one that you started on your own isn't. So then you just abandon it and people are looking around at you like, wait a minute, but you started this project with us. You, you need to do something. You need to help us out. You need to pay us back. And so th those are the things that you've got to think about when you're walking, you know, with the Lord and, and trust in and believe in and all of that. You've also got to consider the things that you started that you didn't fix. So these are the things that you definitely have to work on each and every day. What did I start? Jumping the gun. Not waiting on the Lord, then now I've got to go back and I've got to rectify. I've got to repent. I've got to fix. Some of us got involved in relationships prematurely with different people. And then when the real deal showed up, now you're trying to, you know, oh, I, what I, how am I going to get this man out of my life? How am I going to get this woman out of my life? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. It's not going to be that easy. So... Here we are going to Mark chapter nine, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth. Self-explanatory, no explanation needed. James chapter five, verses 14 and then 15 a is any sick among you. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. So here we are. We've got people that's running to the doctor, but didn't even think about going to the church first. And they're believers. Now, this isn't once again, this isn't for the people who don't believe the unbelievers. Mm -mm. Because if you don't, if you're an unbeliever and you don't believe in the Lord, you don't have any business running to any church. And I think those of you who are unbelievers already know that. But for those of you who do believe, Run to the church, get somebody to anoint that man or woman's head with oil. Or if they can't make it to the church, you take uh, some oil and that the minister has blessed over and you run that to the household and you pray in Jesus name because uh, apparently you do have the power, right? That's what the scripture says. When you decided to walk with the Lord, 
He gave you power, so you might as well start using it. Anoint people, people that are sick in Jesus' name, and not just physically sick. There's mentally sick people, too. There's people who are forgetful. That's a mental illness. There are people that are um, just, and, and then for a person who has some mental issues going on, if you can't, if they won't physically let you uh, anoint their head, you can anoint their pillow, anything that they lay their head on. Let's say that somebody's having problems, you know, walking in, in the wrong direction. Not just a person who has swollen up feet and, and uh, legs um, or having a, some type of condition um, where the, the blood flow isn't going right up and down their leg. We're not just talking about anointing those people's uh, feet and legs. But what about those people who walk places that they have no business walking to? Find some shoes in that household and, and and anoint those shoes in Jesus name. Teenagers going down people's houses. They know they're not supposed to while the parents aren't home. Put some oil in those shoes in Jesus name. And maybe the police or a local neighbor or somebody will be able to see something. And uh, before something bad happens uh, to that child. So, you know, anointed oil is, is anything that it, it can be used for anything that you want to consecrate to the Lord in Jesus name. And you say, oh, well, isn't that getting into like some witchcraft and some weird stuff going on? No, because if once again, look at the scriptures, those people were elders of the church. They were putting oil on people's heads back then. They were putting oil in basins, foot washings and everything else. So, no. It's not witchcraft involved. What's witchcraft is when you're sitting there and, and you're calling out on demonic spirits to do things to other people, whether good, bad or otherwise. And that that first of all, we're not even supposed to be calling on demonic spirits. There is one true God. And according to the scriptures, we have an advocate and his name is Jesus Christ. We can't even get to him without Jesus Christ. So all these people that's like, oh, I'm just going to skip Jesus because he's nothing more than a prophet where they want to talk about he's white Jesus and he has no power. Mm -mm, not in my life. I believe in black Jesus. I don't care what color the truth be told in any way, black, white or otherwise. I do believe he is. A, he is a Jew, according to the scriptures. So you have to go to God through Jesus. God's not listening to prayers without Jesus. So that might be a deliverance for some of you who keep praying and praying to the Lord, but you're not giving Jesus any respect. He's not listening to you. I want you to know that. That's why you you see like in the beginning, you see some signs, you see some breakthrough, right? And it looks good. Uh Oh, something's about to happen. Yes. And then how long does it stay that way? How long do you, how long does your situation stay in a place where it's like, wow, you know, this is good. I, I got my spiritual breakthrough. It's, I mean, wow, mm -mm, it doesn't last. It's these little knockoff. I call them knockoff blessings. They're not the real thing. You know, it's not the real thing. Back in, back before I even decided to come to the Lord, I had what you call knockoff blessings. People said you were doing some things back then when you were in a world that you're not doing or that you're doing now in the spiritual. But the difference was, was that those were the knockoff blessings because they weren't long lasting. Yeah. Okay. So I got a dream interpretation. Um, I got some type of, uh, uh, spiritual gifting in different areas, you know, and I was out in the world at the time, big deal, but did they last and did they really impact people? Did they draw people to the Lord? No. You know, so now I'm on the on the right side and the right side is consisting of blessings and the Lord and Jesus and the church and the Bible and on and on and on. And as a result of using those different tools, I'm seeing long lasting blessings, blessings that I sowed to see um, 10 years ago. And now I'm and even now I'm still seeing blessings, you know, so and I didn't have to mind you. I sowed a seed. And when I say sowed a seed, I'm talking about not money. I'm talking about sowing seed of time, you know, and then there's, of course, service. Now, yeah, you can sow seeds of money, but you can't pay for spiritual gifts. And that's but that's what the church is doing nowadays. They're trying to associate money 
with the blessing and with the spiritual gift. If you give this amount of money, then you're going to get this, this, and this. That's, that's one of those. I mean, it, that's like a Walmart church, if you will. Mm, let me see today. What am I going to buy? Mm, I think today I'll buy the gift of prophecy. Mm, let me sell you about $5 for that. Uh, let me see. I want the gift of dream interpretation. Let me sell about 10. Um, mm, then I need a little bit more money in my bank account. So I'll sell, I'll sell about, about 120. Yeah. Cause I, I definitely need a hundred, 10 refold, uh, a hundred plus 10 fold return. Yep. Okay. Uh, uh, that's not how God works. Get into the word, get into the word where that's concerned. All right. Well, thank you very much for listening and keep the faith in the Lord. That is.